won't wrap up until January or something. Yeah. So they're probably a bit confused about... Bit tired, but they're doing they're reforming. Yeah. They're 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 exactly. Reforming music, just join in when you want, time, yeah. whenever yeah. you fancy, <laughs> uh, going to the Millennium Butch. It was very strange for me, though, because we were all watching, for all of us, because Philippa Forrester was in fact in Mexico while we were watching that. <laughs> <laughs> Did and you enjoy it? How nice it was too. It was so warm and there was some music and I was swaying. It was great. <laughs> now, <laughs> to bring you more of the medical breakthroughs of the 20th century, a little glimpse into the future again. Those have allowed us to live longer and more healthy lives than at any other time in history. And scientists now believe medical advances in the next century will be so significant that many millennium babies, and we've seen lots of those tonight, should have a reasonable chance of seeing in the new year of 2100. Well, we asked Dr. Mark Porter, medical consultant to the Millennium Dome, to give us his views on the medical highs of the 20th century and what we may expect from the new century. I suppose the 1920s were the big heyday for me, um, the discovery of insulin. Until then, there was no treatment for serious diabetes at all. It was a terrible condition. And, of course, Alexander Fleming's work in 1928, when he discovered by accident penicillin, which started the whole genre of antibiotics, which, of course, we now take for granted, but really revolutionised the face of medical care. People were dying left, right and centre of infection before then. So, what changes can we expect to see over the next century? Most experts believe that more and more of us will be diagnosing medical problems in our own home. Now, this small device that you've probably seen me fiddling with is a forerunner of what we can expect to see in common use. It's actually a portable, do-it-yourself ECG monitor. Now, if you've got a heart problem that never seems to happen when the doctor's nearby, you can take this home, you wear it, if you feel changes in your heart rate, you simply press a little button on the side and it digitally records the rhythm of your heart onto this disc, which you then pop into your PC and email straight to your GP, who can then track your health remotely. But what about when things do go wrong? Well, the 20th century saw the birth of transplant surgery, but now we're facing terrible organ shortages. The 21st century should see a solution to that problem. In the future, surgeons will be able to order up replacement organs grown to order. Four years ago, a US team engineered cartilage in the shape of a human ear and grew it on the back of a mouse. This opened up a whole new area of science called tissue engineering, offering an end to organ donation and problems with body rejection. Today, labs grow an assortment of body parts, including skin, blood vessels, and even bone. In the next century, organ farms will grow a range of complex body parts, such as kidneys, livers, even hearts. But at the end of the 20th century, one breakthrough overshadows all other developments. Scientists are now well on the way to cracking our entire genetic code, which will open up a whole new era in medicine. Teams in the UK and US are now mapping out our entire genetic makeup. By analyzing our chromosomes, they'll be able to identify genes responsible for hereditary diseases, in the 21st century, genetic testing and gene manipulation won't just be about treatment and cure, it will be about prediction and prevention. The good side of advances in genetic technology is that we might soon have the answer to conditions that we've not been able to, to do anything about. I'm thinking of things like cancer and inherited conditions like muscular dystrophy and cystic fibrosis. The bad side is that with the sort of understanding that enables us to do anything about those conditions will come an understanding that allows us to fiddle with our genes with possibly tremendous implications. And I don't think we really understand quite what those implications are yet, and we might well learn the hard way. One major implication is that we could all end up designing our own babies. So will beauty and brains be on the shopping list of every 21st century parent? Well, on Wednesday's Tomorrow's World, we asked you whether you want to see a world in which designer baby technology was allowed in certain circumstances, or whether you think it's safer to ban the technology altogether. And we have the results tonight. 32% of you said yes to designer babies, but 68% said no. Astral poll shows a pretty clear majority feeling that society and parents shouldn't be able to choose children's genes. But it also means that in the future, we've probably got a lot of thinking to do and a lot of difficult decisions to make, I think. Team? But I'm really surprised by those results. 
You're surprised? Yes, I, yes, I am. Why? Because on City Hospital, we met a lot of people who did have problems, and that meant they couldn't have children. And they were looking to the future and praying that one day they could. So I was actually quite surprised. I think the fear is that it could get out of control and you could end up choosing the brainiest no. baby, blue eyes, blonde hair. Absolutely. I think that's the fear amongst the public. It's only I, it's the fear I have, that it could all just get out of control. Philippa, thank you very much. You're that welcome. was really fascinating. Thank you very much. <coughs> now, the world may have stopped for a moment last night, but time marched.